Hello and welcome to the show. Now, for today's hill climb monster, we have a rather interesting little car, one that I haven't heard about before, I'll be honest. The Tamo Racemo. It is a small, very, very light, relatively low-powered sports car that might stand a decent chance of going quickly up our snowy mountain. I'm not really quite sure how this car is yeah is going to fare let's start with the tires this is perhaps going to be the one of the more important parts we are going to want it on snow tires that is going to jump our pi up to a class we have only 188 horsepower to start with my fear is with this we might not quite get enough power in it to really be competitive but we will have to wait and see 275s at the back are quite nice along with 245s at the front not the biggest tyres, but equally the car is very small and very light, so I'm hoping we can get away with that. Uh, we are also going to put some aero on the car. Of course, we want all of the downforce that we can get. Uh, Engine-wise, we will have a look. I'm doubting we're going to need to change it. We will, though, need to change the driveline, of course. Make the car all-wheel drive will make it a bit heavier, but rules of the series plus all-wheel drive is always going to be helpful when it comes to getting up a snowy mountain. Uh, engine choices, we can have the motorbike engine in the car, okay, or we can have the turbo rally as a possible one. I'm, yeah, not really wanting to change. This car come with a 1.2 litre engine. So it's a tiny, tiny little engine in this car. I'm assuming it must be turbocharged. Let's go and have a look over here. Yep, indeed it will be. I'm also imagining we're probably going to need all of these parts if we are going to get the power. If not, we'll go for a turbo rally engine, and that will be that, really. Uh, we will come back to that, however, after we have gone and got brakes, we have got suspension, because we're going to want rally suspension, after all, and all of the various other bits of handling. Uh, we will grab a roll cage, and then some weight reduction. I think we might want to go as much as we can. Yeah, the all-wheel drive did make the car a bit heavier, so if we go as much as we can, that will now be lighter than the standard rear-wheel drive car. So I'm okay with that, and now we will just chuck power at it. Chuck as much power at it as we can and hope for the best. Hope that it'll be enough, really, to uh, to get us to the top of S1 class. It's not going to be the most powerful car we've had, not by a long way, and yet power-to-weight ratio isn't going to be the most ridiculous. However, it might just about be enough, and it might be good enough handling, is what I'm thinking here if we can actually do it. Come on, car. Come on, Tamo. We can get... No, we can't, can we? Uh, did I... I already upgraded the Tamo. Bugger. That's not so good. We might actually have to go for a turbo rally engine. First time in this series that the turbo rally engine has been used. That's a little bit of a shame, but that's the way that it goes, I am afraid. Turbo rally engine is not ideal. They are a difficult engine to work with in terms of building car. I quite like it. It's quite a fun engine to drive, especially now you don't have the they have to change up by 6,000 RPM, but because we can only take the restrictors off, that is all we can do with the car. I can't do any yeah, any different upgrades. We can't also lighten it. You know, Normally I go for exhaust and so on, and that would lighten it. We don't have that. We do have a lot of torque going on, and we do have quite a lot of power in our car. So that is something, at least. Uh, we can sort of chuck these bits on and hope for the best. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be our vehicle built, I think. I'm not sure there's anything else that I can really do with the vehicle. Yeah, very, very light. Uh, not, I guess, not the lightest car we've had, but very light. Uh, nice modern car. Hopefully, will grip very well. So we might be able to uh, carry corner speed. And that's what we're going for in our car. So, it is off to the Devil's Corners Hill Climb with our Tamo, where I will get three runs through the course in an attempt to go as fast as possible. Possible. The current target at 157.2 set by the Lancia Stratos. Now, I do think this car might struggle to challenge the Lancia. However, while it doesn't have the greatest power to weight ratio, no, not like the BMW 2002 Turbo, the Datsun that went up last time, and so on and so forth, that isn't the be all and end all of fast cars up this course. The Lamborghini Countach proved that. It went very, very quick. I mean, he's in second, a 57.3 from the Lamborghini. Went very, very quickly because it could maintain corner speed. Now, if I can do a similar thing with this car, if this car is good enough to carry the corner speed, maybe, just maybe, we have enough power to make it all work. We will have to wait and see. I mean, 113 miles an hour is definitely not the most impressive in terms of acceleration. 
down to, I mean, we're doing 130 almost with the Datsun down there. So, yes, we have lost ground in that acceleration zone, but I'm hoping that we can make up ground through... Oh, got these hairpins. I didn't know get that line right, though. That got quite a lot of understeer on the way through the corner. Bugger, that's not going to help our time particularly. Uh, it's a pretty nice handling car, actually. We don't have a huge amount of oversteer. Uh, I kind of have confidence already to really throw the car at some of these faster corners, and I say that. We've not quite got the grip to get away with that much speed. That was some bravery there. But it was relatively easy to save as well as we now run down. Perhaps one of the longer straights. How fast will we get the Tamo? Uh, again, it's only 112 miles an hour. So, yeah, we are severely lacking in terms of straight line speed. That being said, I do think we are quite nice through the corners. Also, a very interesting kind of dashboard going on. I say dashboard going on. It's kind of like they've got three tablets and put them behind the steering wheel. It kind of works. I'm not a massive fan of modern cars. Generally, I quite like this one so far. Uh, <laughs> I quite, it, it's, it's a very, very bare interior, but I'm assuming that has been done to keep the car as light as possible. Because, yeah, it's £2,200 from standard, which is not very much weight at all. We should be flat out here if I get the line correct, which I don't at all. Terribly, terribly out of position. And onto the icy straight we go, being thrown around at no end. Although I do think, unfortunately, we are quite a way down on that target time. And while... It's been a little bit scruffy in places. Oh, I braked way, way too early there. I might have even missed that checkpoint trying to dive to the inside. Yeah, it's been it's been a bit scruffy in places. A terrible, terrible end to that run. We need to find some speed. I'm surprised. I was expecting a bit more, a bit more out of the car. In all honesty, down there. But uh, yeah. Well, it looks like we might be fighting to try and get under the two-minute mark. Oh, yeah, that this vehicle surprises me. I'll be honest. With the, uh, with the car, I am going to uh, try dealing with the engine slightly differently. Now, the Turbo Rally engine from the uh, Forza 5 and 6 days, you have to change gear very early with the car, like 5,500 RPM, otherwise you lost massive amounts of power. Now, this one is better, but I am still going to short shift a little bit in it to try and uh, make the most of the, uh, the torque and so on that we have available. See if I can get some speed somewhere out of this car it does feel like a really nice vehicle to drive feels very nicely balanced and it does give me, yeah, give me confidence to kind of throw it through these corners as I said last time to try and you know maintain that corner speed it's just obviously not going quite fast enough I think it is really struggling a bit in terms of acceleration which is a shame and there's not really a huge amount that uh, that I can do about that I'm not sure quite why it's struggling as, as much as uh, some of the other cars that have gone that have gone around here. Oh, we're going to smack our nose a little bit on the floor. That's fine. Come on, yeah, turn around the next hairpin. Try and get some more of that power down as we weave our way. It's a really, really nice car to drive. It's a really very, very nice car to drive. Admittedly, yeah, we are some PI down off the top of S1 class, as was the Subaru Brat, though. Admittedly, the Brat was off the bonkers end of the spectrum, let's be honest here. Brat was crazy. Um, yeah, we are still struggling. We're still really struggling for speed. We got away with going along the ice, though, which is always nice. Um, oh, turned in a little bit there. That's trouble. That's a bit of trouble through there. <laughs> that was my bad. Ah, oh, damn it. We messed up that line quite a lot. Uh, well, it's... Apart from the very end of the run, things were going better for the Tamo. As we round the final corner, I'm trying to carry as much speed as I can. It's struggling. It's struggling. We found a fair bit of time on that run. We need to find another eight tenths of a second. I'm not sure where I'm going to find that. Bugger. Well, this is it. The final run for the Tamo as I attempt to find some time with the car. Now, immediately with the Lamborghini Countach, I found a mega amount of time, like two and a bit seconds on its final run. But I don't know how I managed that one. So if we could do a similar thing with this car, that would be great. Because otherwise, it's not looking great for a car that I actually really like. This is a really nice car to uh, to drive. Oh, come on. It turned around. And I imagine it would probably be great fun in standard spec as well. As you saw, you know, it's not amazingly powerful, this car. It's only got a 1.2-litre engine. But, 
I imagine it's a lot of fun because not having a huge amount of power on a very light car does tend to make for some excellent, excellent driving entertainment. Probably be a lot of fun to race whole field of standard ones of these. That sounds like something we would be very <laughs> interested in doing at some point. We are better on this run so far. I'm trying to be as neat as possible. I'm trying to be really careful with the gears. I'm trying to run it a little bit longer than normal, but not quite get to the very, very top of the rev range, because I think it might still lose a little bit of power up there uh, and make the most of the torque. Don't slide the car around at all, if we can help it. I know we're on snow and ice and so on. However, we still don't want to be going sideways un unless things are going, well, uh, at all, really, unless things are going very, very badly wrong. That is about the only time where we will be. Yeah, it's, it's nicely planted through these corners. Now, we should be flat out up here. No problem. Much better. Much better through the air that time around. We clip the checkpoint and we're going to have to get on the brakes, get the car churned. We clip the ice a smidge on the inside, but we have got away with it as we run across the jump. 97 miles an hour is a better showing from the uh, Tamo here. We head towards this final couple of corners, taking an ultimate turn and a very, very tight line to try and give us as nice a run to the line as possible. It's much better. That's much better, much more like it from the Tamo, a 58.7. Oh, that was <laughs> that was a good run. I'm pleased with that one. We found a, a massive amount of time on that. Again, we found about the two-second mark on that run by being neat, stopping the car, sliding around, and uh, yeah, being as precise as possible with it. It's an excellent car. The 58.7 will put the vehicle into ninth place. It beats the Delta S4, the Aston Martin. Uh, the Vantage V600, the Transit, the Fiat 131, however, does lose out to the Datsun, the crazy, crazy Datsun, the Toyota A86, and the likes of the Dodge Charger and the BMW 2002 Turbo, but it's a massively crowded area of the table. You know, we're only talking about three-tenths to that BMW 2002, so that's, yeah, a, dec a decent showing, a better, a much, much, much better run from me on that, uh, that final one. Again, there's another car, all of your speed will be made up through the corners. And that's it. It's not got a huge amount of acceleration on the straights. In fact, it probably struggles one of the most that we have seen. Press like the Renault Alpine that were really low on power and still relatively heavy. Struggle a little bit more than this, but uh, yeah, it does struggle when it comes to the straights, but can carry plenty of corner speed. Yeah, I, I very much like this car. It's a huge amount of fun to, uh, to go driving with. You could get a little bit more power in the car, then it would be even better for this uh, hill climbing malarkey, but... Uh, as it is, plenty of fun. Also, my kitten has managed to sneak and climb up on my desk where he shouldn't be, so I've got to go sort out a cat. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.